Welcome back. Senegal is tracking its development goals with a new railway line. The first phase of the railway, which will link the capital city with its surrounding areas and eventually the international airport, has been launched in Dakar. Senegal's president, Macky Sall, who is up for re-election next month, says the Dakar Regional Express train project is worth about 459 million U.S. dollars. Senegal has launched its first rail project since independence from France in 1960. The Regional Express Train, or TER, is part of an ambitious development agenda that the country's government has been implementing in hopes of becoming a prime African investment destination. Raphael Bernardelli, who runs operations in North and Central Africa for French train makers Alstom, says the project was an encouraging sign of growth opportunities in a region with relatively poor rail infrastructure. Alstom has become contracted to supply 15 dual-mode electric and diesel trains. It has delivered three so far. Africa is obviously the main continent in the years to come, so there are many projects in Africa. Today, we are present in North Africa, historically, which has equipped itself a lot with tramways and metros. And at the moment, the car project is a bit like the precursor of great urban projects in Central Africa, and the tour of the car is an excellent image for the future of Africa and Central Africa in particular. President Macky Sall says the first phase would link Dakar, the capital, to the city of Diamniado, 38 kilometers away, but it won't be operational until mid-2019. The first phase has taken two years to complete. The second phase will connect Dakar to the Blaise Diagne International Airport, a journey expected to take 45 minutes. <laughs> Senegalese men and women deserve to travel in comfort and security and being in control of their time with the mass transport system of the highest international standards. The TER, which is co-financed by the African Development Bank, the Islamic Bank for Development in France, is expected to eventually ferry out about 100,000 passengers every day. Morocco inaugurated Africa's first high-speed line last November. Algeria, where Alstom built a tram line in the Sahara Desert last year, is extending its metro network. Kenya has also added to its railway network and has already ferried 2 million passengers on the China-financed Mombasa-Nairobi line that opened in 2017. A Somali family previously living in the UK recently returned home to open a technical training school to produce the critical human resource needed to help the country rebuild after decades of conflict. Somalia was engulfed by war in 1991 when clan warlords overthrew a dictator and then turned on each other. A new vocational training center in Mogadishu, Somalia, is providing opportunities for students seeking to learn various technical skills in the country, offering youth options that were not available to them in the past. The Haleberry's Technical Development Center offers electrical and mechanical courses, as well as courses in construction. The institution was started in 2017 with an aim to enhance skills and prepare youth for the job market and make them self-reliant. 18-year-old Soda Sud is a high school graduate. She is learning to be an electrician at the institution. When I enrolled at the college, I noticed that my neighbors needed electrical services. Whenever they needed to repair a lamp, it would take them three to four days to get the lamp fixed. But I am now able to help them. Somalia needs professional electricians who can take part in the country's development. Somalia has been trying to recover from a conflict that engulfed the country in 1991, when clan warlords overthrew a dictator and then turned on each other. While parts of Somalia are plagued by militant violence, a degree of stability is being felt in the capital, and many expatriates are returning home to help in rebuilding efforts. Battery Hale and his family came back home from the United Kingdom in 2014 to run various businesses in the country. They decided to start the college three years later to help drive development in the country. 
2017. We opened this vocational training center in 2017 after we saw a great need for vocational training institutions across the country since many were destroyed during the civil war. We are ready to develop Somali's young generation, equipping them with vocational skills as they take part in the progress of the country. So far, we have registered 260 students. The school is also working to educate Somalis about the important role vocational training plays in educating youth and generating employment. The institution is funded by the Somali and Norwegian governments. While the African continent is celebrated for its music, its contribution to the classical canon is often overlooked. But recently, there has been something of a revival of interest in both African composers and performers of classical music. London-based Uchenna Ngwewe seeks to introduce African classical music to the mainstream. A concert at one of London's most prominent cathedrals. Here, the Ducas Ensemble are performing music for instrumental ensemble by African composers, including Shagun Akiola, Erolyn Wallen, and Samuel Coleridge Taylor. Uche Nangwe spent a season as guest principal oboe with KwaZulu Natal Philharmonic Orchestra in Durban, South Africa. Now, she is in London working on a project called Plain Sight Sound that started with her desire to perform Samuel Coleridge Taylor's Nonnet. As it involves nine musicians, she then started looking for other pieces that would work alongside it. She discovered that there were music students from African countries who attended music college in the UK from at least the mid-20th century and went on to have successful careers. With a Plain Sight Sound project, she aims to uncover these stories and get musicians, amateurs and professionals performing, recording and listening to this music. Some of these composers were published. People like Bella Shawande, for instance, were very popular in Britain in the 30s, 40s and 50s, uh, 1930s to 50s. And his music was published. It's still available in some form, especially his organ works, but his larger works seem to have fallen out of favour for um, various reasons. If Publishers tend not to keep things in print forever. Uche Nangwe says that musicians are always looking for new music to play and that once they have found these little known pieces, they can keep them alive. But she isn't alone in her quest in classical music composed by Africans. South African double bass player Leon Bosch devotes hours each day to practice. As the 57-year-old Leon tells us he believes he is the first African classic double bass player. The others are jazz musicians. He grew up in the apartheid era and nobody believed he would succeed. When I first started learning to play the double bass, most African bass players were jazz musicians. I think I'm, it's true to say that I'm the first African classical double bass player. It was something completely new to me and to everybody else around me. Nobody expected me actually to flourish playing this instrument. I remember being told that this is not the sort of thing for people like you. 